okay. <laughs> right, we've made it, everyone. Um, we've made it with all the different time changes, clock changes, with one side of Australia, with David over in Perth, with Medina over near, near Sydney. Uh, well, sort of, New South Wales, near, near the border of uh, Queensland and yeah. New South Wales. And Bryce in Atlanta <laughs> and myself in the UK. So all different times, all things, but we've got here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see how this goes um, with the talk. You all know the score now. So if we start talking about things that we're not really meant to talk about, then you will find all the links below in terms of how to watch it on our various different channels. So we'll try and be good with words, but if we, we make some slip-ups then you'll see the shorter version on YouTube and the full version on our other channels below. So how is everyone? We'll start with you, Bryce. How are you doing? I'm good. It's early here, but I, I love getting up early. So um, I was saying before we got on, I'll be careful how I say this. I'm super excited because there's a new documentary that's coming out in May about, uh, we'll just say the competition that happened here in the United States back in November of 2020. And, um, I think it's going to absolutely uh, take down the, the head of the, the CEO of the corporation, we'll say. And yeah. Is about. So that's, that's got to happen. And Charlie Ward said that, that that's going to have to happen um, in order for everything across the world to have a domino effect. And so um, fingers crossed, this is it. So um, I can't wait to see the documentary and it's going to focus a lot on Georgia because a lot of the, um, Cheating happened here in my state, in my county, actually, Fulton County. And so we're going to see a lot of proof of um, undeniable proof of, uh, you know, tamperings, tam shenanigans, we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it fascinating? Don't you think, guys, it's so, so fascinating that it takes a movie to bring this out rather than legal investigations that are all <laughs> I find that in this day and age, well, I'll be surprised, perhaps not, but it is, it is quite quite shocking from my point of view that it's going to take a movie to, to wake people up to that. Yeah, and God bless the citizen journalists who have actually done the job that the, um, we'll say the federal people should have been doing. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want really to care about the, what, I, the, the, you know, what they're called, but um, they should have been doing that and they didn't. So citizens figured it out and did it themselves and created a documentary. And so that gives me faith in humanity um, because as we know, all of us representing different countries, it's the people that can end this. It's the people. If the people just stop complying, they can end this. The, 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 you know, what, what do they say? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so yeah. those in charge are not going to rectify this if it's not in their best interest to rectify this. And so the people, us, the humans, the 99% it is in our best interest to rectify these things across the world. And so it gives me such faith in humanity that there are people out there that were patient enough. Um, I think they said they had over like 400 million minutes of evidence from computer scans mm. and stuff. Um, unbelievable that they sat through, and through everything, learned the law, studied the law, learned the law, and were able to then factually, not under, you know, any type of, uh, assumptions or speculation were able to factually show through this documentary where criminal proceedings should be taking place. And so that's, if this happens in the United States, I, I expect a chain reaction all over the world. So fingers crossed and high five to those people who did this because wow. Yeah. And what about you, David? How are you doing? This is such exciting news. Something else Medina and I have both been watching this morning that we're going to talk about. <laughs> Oh How you yeah, uh, first because overall I'm pretty good. Thing. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been really strange. I was, I was playing basketball this morning only for about twenty to thirty minutes, and I just saw every two minutes there was a new plane going in the same direction. It's really odd, and I saw the same thing last week. I think I mentioned it to you, Bryce. Mm -hmm. And there have been some loads, and this is just the time that I'm outside, you know. And I, and then even when I was going for my walk at lunchtime, still more planes going. So. It's really strange. This is an abnormal amount of plane activity happening. Uh, I assume it's almost every day because I can still hear them and, and I'm not outside, you know, for eight hours a day. <laughs> but I, I bet you if I was, I'd still see as many, well, if not more, in that time period. Um, but overall, yeah, pretty good. Uh, we actually had some rain, which is so funny because we, we had forecasted rain last week. It didn't rain at all. Then all of a sudden it rained on Sunday, which wasn't forecasted. And then I forecasted rain for today 
uh, today's Monday, isn't it? Tuesday, yeah. yesterday, and uh, that didn't happen either. So the weatherman is not really that good, but you know, at least we got some rain, and hopefully it's not going to turn into a drought like they like they were planning. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Um. What about Medina? How's everything with you? Oh, excellent. Very good. I just was blown away by this movie. I literally just got off when I when I came onto this um, call, and um, it starts. It's got water in the title. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> and um, it, it blew me away. The information in that, and I think every single person out there really should watch this movie because it has information in it that is key to everything that we've just gone through the past two years. And it also indicates the level of uh, nefariousness that we're dealing with, with um, this and with, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of the um, hospitalisation procedures and things like that. So I think that, that this is absolutely crucial, new bit of information for us all to learn from, and it has water in the title. So uh, I think we can somehow, I don't know, put words across and, and get, that, that, get that out there. So, and the other thing, I had a dream with, with the name of the... Uh, right. Uh, okay, with REM in it. You know, that one. I had a dream and they were saying, mention this, get that out there about this topic. So I had a dream about that, which is saying that I need to, you know, on my own social media platforms, try to get the message out there as well. So this is all relating to this incredible movie that's just been released. And I know that the um, interviewer, they tried to um, stop him from putting this movie out just yeah. in the last week as well. So that's how important it is for everyone to watch this movie. The other thing that I really want to share that's super exciting is I had a galactic experience <laughs> with the ETs in the last week um, or a couple of weeks. And not only me, but it was fascinating because um, I'd like to share that with you as well. Uh, sh shall I mention it now or will we... Well, can I just mention, can I just butt in about the other movie that Medina was seeing? Because I watched that this morning as well. And just before you jumped on, Medina, I was talking to Bryce and David about, about how amazing. So you'll be able to go to all of our tele Telegram channels and see the link to that movie because we can't mention it here. I was saying, I just want to back up everything you said on that, Medina. It's absolutely phenomenal. It was so good that even as a biologist, yeah. I'm going to re-listen to it several times because there's so much information there. But all I can say is from a, a medical perspective as well as an other perspectives, it made complete sense. And it's so detailed and so well explained um, that we really, uh, it is very important for people to share that far and wide. Didn't you think when you watched it, Medina, as well, that I think even people that are not conspiracy type people and things, because it's so well explained medically yes. or, or factually, a bit like the movie you were talking about, Bryce, and go to all our channel, Telegram channels, you guys know how to find things now. So because these movie makers have done such a wonderful job, for me, the, the water one, you could share that with a lot of people that aren't necessarily on your wavelength, and I think they'd be hard pushed to argue with it. Which Absolutely, really and, and the biblical connotations, you know, the metaphysical biblical connotations of the, 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 the snake and the serpent, you know, that... That is just so such a metaphor for everything that we're going through at the moment, this fight, this spiritual war between light and dark, good and evil, and it just represents the whole thing perfectly. It, it just, it all sort of, it's like all the puzzle pieces coming together and just starting to make the puzzle a whole, you know, it's amazing. Yeah. And I think also I just want to say to people, when you watch it, it's not a fear-mongering thing. There's so many people out there, and we do a lot on all of our channels, about helping people, how you can empower yourself to be one step ahead for them by taking, by looking at, uh, at what things you can do product-wise and things to protect yourself from a lot of these. So um, for me, I didn't find it at all fear-mongering. I just thought this is an absolute masterpiece and will go down in history along with a lot of, the one that, that Bryce is talking about. So I would, I just really hope that anyone who watches it 
is encouraged enough to know there's lots and lots and lots of brilliant people there that are sharing information, however much they try and ban us, about what you can do to protect yourself against all these. So please know that there are, you know, there is those options out there and don't lose, don't despair. Everyone is being encouraged at the moment to do that, Catherine. Like everyone that I'm talking to is saying, oh, I'm detoxing, I'm doing this with my body, I'm building my immune my immune system in this way and everyone that I talk to is working on themselves they're intuitively yeah. being guided from a higher you know spiritual source to go in and work on their physical bodies and get and get clear and get strong and detox and it's such a profound um, spiritual um, uh, coming uh, message coming through at the moment so yeah and you can see why when you see that movie yeah before we go any further I just want to put a little disclaimer out it is 6.20 in the morning here and my dog is sleeping beside me and he's a very loud sleeper, guys. He's a very loud snorer. Snoring. He <laughs> talks in his sleep all the time. So if you hear funky noises beside me, there's no one being held against their will here that is literally Robbie just enjoying himself. So he's probably Aww. dreaming about being with Catherine in her, in her beautiful yard <laughs> chasing birds. So if you hear weird noises, that's he's... That's him. So, oh, we love so. Conspiracy theories. That's literally him sleeping. So, There's so much exciting stuff coming out. Tell us about your experience, then, Medina. Wow, this is so exciting. So, uh, this lady who was um, had been a client, she contacted me and she said to me, Medina, she said, I I have three white. Um, circles on my right arm and I have like a trident shape and she said can can I do a session with you so I can go in and look what they are because they were sort of quite symmetrical on her right arm and I thought oh okay so we, we made a time and then the next day I woke up and my right arm <laughs> I'm not kidding you was really itchy and I thought oh my god maybe a spider bit me in the night or something get that's what it felt like so I look at my arm I kid you not three white circles and sort of like a long shape on my on my right arm and I'm thinking oh my gosh that is so incredible and I'm I'm thinking um I'm feeling like it's a galactic type thing so I, I go in in a meditation and I'm getting that it was um and and, and then I I, I check with a lot of I've got quite a, a lot of big network of psychic friends so I checked in with them as well so what I got was that um there was uh, basically this um, soft um, disclosure happening where we're, it's like first contact where we're going up into spaceships. So this was a bit like an implant or a, a QR type code. This is what I'm getting anyway, um, which was being used so that you could identify yourself going into this ship. And then um, I had a dream a few nights later where I had all these um, orbs surrounding me and I was going into a ship. It was, it was like a ship. Um, a proper ship, but it was actually a spaceship, but it was at first it appeared as a ship. And it's in interesting that they would use that because I love boats and ships and I've worked on them and things like that. So, but it was, I felt it was a spaceship, but it was presented as a ship. And so then I thought, wow, this is all, you know, it's all coming together. And then I put a post on, about all this on my channel and please go there and check this post out. And all these comments of people having similar experiences of going to ships now you know in their sleep and also um you know there was a few people that mentioned the dots that they had on their arm and hand as well so you know often when you experience something you experience it because the collective is also experiencing it and so um you you, you are just um going through that experience with, with with a lot of other people and so when i posted it i wanted to see if i got that sort of response and i, and I certainly didn't i got people messaging me and i got lots of comments of people having similar experiences. So I just feel like this um, disclosure is really starting to power up now. You know, it's really starting to am amplify with, with our uh, galactic cosmic family. And um, so this, th this was... Also, another interesting thing was it healed really quickly on my hand. You know, that's another sign too when it when it heals super super quickly. The the, the um, itchiness and everything went away very quickly, and the marks. And I also had a 
very small um, symmetrical shaped oblong with little dots in it as well that that looked like a like an imprint so you know and it felt benevolent so if, if anyone out there saying oh no this is not good this is not scary it did feel like a benevolent thing it felt like a positive beneficial thing and it felt like I was in some kind of potentially training that sort of thing and and we are told that you know this is happening and also there's a thing about the orbs of light that are coming down at the moment on the planet and I was meditating and my spiritual team said to me they said tell people out there to um, tell all the institutions in the world with children all the educational facilities to call in the orbs of light to work with the children and to protect the children. So I got this really powerful message that the orbs of light need to be called in to work with the children at this time. And um, so there's so many pictures now, of photos of people with orbs and everything as well. So they're, they're also coming down more and more. And of course, we know with crop circles, they often uh, identify that there are these orbs helping to create these crop circles. You know, many people mention that. So just all these fascinating things that have been happening in the last few weeks. Medina, that just gave me chill bumps because my uh, Mystery Monday from yesterday was about the public school system and some urban legends about entities being seen. And I actually did half of it with my friend Stephanie who pulled cards. And basically they, the, the bad guys had been placing these, we'll say institutions, because that's what they are, on particular ley lines to harvest and so it makes sense that now they're trying to clear that with children with um, that. Make, I'm trying to talk around certain words, guys, but um, but for I will link that in my channel, the link to that video down below as well, because that, that literally was what we covered yesterday was what's happening oh. with children, with energies and um, bringing in yeah. nefarious spirits and off worlders from the past now being um, rebalanced possibly with um healing yeah absolutely that, that's really great to hear that confirmation and and that's the other thing all these synchronistic things that are aligning now and coming together to, to, to for us to all um unify and join and the other really powerful message with this is is the unification of humanity is the primary primary thing at the moment just releasing all division on all levels and just um unifying and 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 and, and that is, that's just a key component of everything that's come through in the last two weeks as well. So, yeah. Wow. David, you, you've been having quite a few things recently. Does that, uh, you know, experiences, should we say, does that link into anything that you've been feeling? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, maybe. I did, I did uh, Janine did a reading for me around the blood noses and stuff, and she did say that it had, something you know connected to uh off-worlders and um originally when i was younger the the bad ones got me but then i got rescued by by the good ones and it could have something to do with with some of the experience i've had over the last year and more and also more recently but i i don't know you know mm. i've had a few different people say a few different things about that that entity that i have i don't think it's bad but i i know i don't think it's a negative one but i do you know it's kind of up in the air at this point yeah about what that could have been yeah it was grabbing my feet last night <laughs> i was trying to grab my uh <laughs> my feet so yeah i'm lucky because i just got idris in bed with me last night and no one would get past idris because he's so protect he's just the <laughs> best little spirit animal ever and not i know well all my animals are but he was just uh, snuggled up and keeping everything at bay so it is fascinating, isn't it? And I think it's just really, I was having a chat with Steph from Spiritual Perspectives, your Bryce's best friend, um, yesterday, and we were discussing a lot of things for the animals. And it's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Because I, as someone who works with animals and have been working with animals for so long, which doesn't mean that I'm not still learning masses every single day. But I think it's fascinating just on what you said there, David. It, it's like, Medina, you know that experience and you can feel what it means for you. And then other people are still like, I don't know. And I think that's really important to say to people, that's absolutely fine. You know, just, just explore it and be curious. Don't worry if you don't know if it's definitely this or it's definitely that. Or, I mean, I've got a whole load of questions about ascension because I was having a really fascinating conversation off camera with a really, really good energy healer friend that I know. And we were talking about this whole issue of ascension because the thing is, okay, 
if we if we think that if we if it's our belief systems which it might or not might not be the people on the screen that we've chosen to be here in this time in this physical vessel which we're calling our bodies then the whole ascension thing about you know sort of changing the vibrational sort of dna well there's a there's a whole load of spiritual communities that believe that that ascension isn't happening as we're all talking about it at all and then that actually like the crystalline thing you mean yeah oh in whatever way it means to people like the crystalline thing because that that could be a diversion against keeping people grounded in 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 contact with Gaia and mother earth and things and there's so many fascinating conversations to have around all these issues because i think a lot of people like you were talking about this earlier on a different matter Bryce. A lot of people put the put things across and it might be their truth, mm-hmm. but mm. it doesn't have to be your truth. And don't worry if it's not your truth, because you might see things differently. And at the end of the day, we don't need to worry about it because we're all going to find out one way or the other. Um, mm. But I, I thought that was really fascinating because certainly that resonates with where I'm feeling at the moment. I'm like, well, actually, for me, grounding, being in the present moment and everything is really, really important to make the most of this current life I'm in and this current physical body. Well, I, I agree. You know, we need to honour one another's um, differences and if we have different perspectives on things, and that's that's beautiful because that's what makes us all unique. But um, my personal experience is that it's very much about <laughs> ascension at the moment, uh, personally and also planetarily and also Mother Gaia, and, and that's just my experience. So I, it's funny because therefore I would, I would draw in people, magnetise people who are having that same experience. And, you know, I've had so many people... Um, since I posted that galactic post asking about you know ascension and I'm actually running ascension classes <laughs> so at the moment just because I've been requested to just with some beautiful ascension techniques and information about you know how you can work on your own evolution which is just it's really self-transformation it's um transmutation of energy it's becoming more um embodied in light you know um, um transmuting our shadow aspects you know it's not a it's not a uh, sort of really complicated um thing really it, it just means that we're becoming more light filled and we're we're raising our frequency vibration and becoming more enlightened and wise and um, being the best aspect of who we truly are you know at reaching our highest potential as a soul and 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 i think we are all inherently doing that anyway by being here at the moment um, because we're in such an accelerated um course at the minute with the transition of the planet that you can't really but help um shift energetically and and change change through this whole process that we're going through and and it is I, I believe for, for really everyone um, except for a small percentage of the really dark beings it, it really is about us um, through this um, opportunity um, really transmuting all the things that that no longer serve us I think the biggest thing I've noticed and you know my life outside of you for the past 15 years has been studying um uh, old spirit, old spiritual faiths, the Upanishads, the Vedas texts, like going to India and, you know, really, really honing in on the philosophy. And the one thing I've noticed that's troubling me is I think people are really confused. I like Medina, how you focused on the transmutation of the transmutation of the shadow side. Cause I think the one thing that a lot of people are really missing and it's getting into some delusion is that sometimes the darkness that we have to walk through isn't coming from anything exterior. It's coming from our own selves. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call karma. And karma is just your work. It's what you have to work through. And Mm -hmm. I've noticed a lot with people in in, have been in contact with me that anything that they're dealing with, like abandonment, shame, guilt, all these things, they're now projecting that onto somebody else's fault. And Mm -hmm. part of true spirituality and the true spirit in order to ascend into this more enlightened state of being you have to descend first you have mm. to hit rock yeah rock, absolutely rock bottom, actually go down into the base of of who you are as a human and we see that again with the old system of prakriti being nature parusha being the soul ishvara being god parusha your soul and your nature your prakriti are literally two different things existing in one and the prakriti, the nature of yourself, is an expression. It's a shakti of the soul. And the soul is without limitation. The soul is without, the soul is pure 
consciousness. And so these feelings we have, these emotions that we have as humans are super important into us then understanding the limit, limitness of this, the, the non-limitation of the soul. And the one thing I'm seeing people do, and it's really bothering me, is that they're not, they're trying to ignore that in order to go over here. And that's considered derangement and delusion. You know, it's like I've been saying a lot. I know we talked about this, David, like everybody's so focused on like the Trumps or the Kennedys. You know, I was telling Catherine, I'm getting really, really, really annoyed at people assigning us truthers to be some famous person that we're not. This is delusional. This is derangement. Mm -hmm. Instead of focusing so much on that, we've already learned a good deal of what got us to this place. We've learned it. We've, we've put it into our system. We've sat with it. Now it's time to, to work on you. In order for you to mm. change, that's the alchemy. Our friend Shanti talks about that all the time. That's the alchemy of transformation is to take the lead of you, the heaviness of you, you know, the anxiety, the fear, the shame, the guilt, and actually sitting in that and owning it as yours and not putting it off on someone else, not owning it as something that you, you know, I talk about a lot, like my father left when I was a teenager, you know, that that's a common for people to have like daddy issues, abandonment issues, right? But the fact that my did my dad did that really has nothing to do with my dad. It's yeah. not my responsibility to work through that. And I have for a long time, I've worked through that um, because that was a karma I agreed to take on in order to better understand my soul. And so I, I would really encourage, and I loved how you focused, you said that Medina integrating the shadow, because that's what that is. That's the shadow. And so many people, you know, and I think people are confused too. Stephanie, I've talked about this. Divination is not spirituality. It's just communication. It's a gift people have to channel. Yes. But it's spirituality is actually working on you without anything, just raw being with you. You know, and I think a lot of people are confusing. They're still projecting when you're looking at the cards or the board, you're still projecting the essence of who you are on something outside of yourself, which everyone's been. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, that the gift that we're being given at the moment with everything that's going on, there's so much information about just one topic. You've got 100 different opinions on one topic. And the gift of that is, is exactly what you're talking about, Bryce, which is that we are being forced to go within now to finances because you can't get, you know, you talk to 10 friends and they'll all say 10 different things. So um, we are, we're really being pushed energetically to learn how to go within to discern what the truth is because we have the truth within us, as you say, and it's um, universal consciousness, divine knowledge, divine consciousness. And, and, and now we really, if we want to be centred and stable in our energy and have a strong foundation, we can't be externalising how we feel about the world right now. We have to go within. So it's really pushing everyone to just centre close their eyes and just ask what the truth is and what the answers are for you. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's something that, that is a gift that's been given to us at the moment because of the way the world is so chaotic and there's so much going on. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, David, you said that in one, I loved it. You said, this is the resistance. You have to have resistance. We always talk about that in yoga. You have to have resistance in order for there to be um, a shift and a change, a friction created. And when friction is created, a spark is created. And you already are that spark. But that spark has to happen in order for you to, if everything's hunky-dory and just moving along. Sorry. <laughs> He's being very loud. Yeah. Um, you don't do anything. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> you're exercising. Just, it's just weights. It's resistance. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just think it's really important that people sort of do this because there's a lot of people sort of pushing their view of the world out there. And that's absolutely fine because people can choose to listen to it or not. But I also see a lot of confusion when other people are, are feeling other things and different things and have questions just to encourage people. It's absolutely fine to question. It's absolutely fine to ask these questions and sort of explore it from things that you're seeing. Just because someone tells you it has to be a certain way doesn't mean that's your way or your lesson or your journey at the moment. Um so it's just something I've seen quite a lot in, in people and things. And I, I think it's just all about people being confident to learn and sort of really just keep working on what resonates with you, take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't um, and, and don't bash the messenger. Um, and I just think that's really, really important. Because yeah. 
it, it conflict resolution skills, you know, they're so necessary right now. We haven't had to deal with this before too much in the past because people would just, um, the, the issues weren't so um, life-threatening and so important that we had these um, topics where, where we have, sometimes diametrically opposed beliefs on really key issues that we're very passionate about. And you have to learn ways to um, work together on that. And it's, it's like a form of conflict resolution that we now are addressing all the time with people. You know, um, there's all sorts of um, differences where we have to work out how we can navigate that and still keep the love, you know, that we have for the other person or the, or the connection that we have with the other person and not let that um, damage the, the, the relationship but be able to work through it. Um, and, and, and that's, that, that's really um, a thing that, that so many people are needing to work on at the moment. Yeah. And we, we can't allow, like, I think what's happening too, it, it's, it's a little bit scary. Um, it's like we're changing, we have, a lot of people aren't changing the formula. They're just changing the product in the sense that they're not, they're still relying on somebody else to do the work for them. They're still relying on somebody else to tell them what the truth is. And that's, it, they're, they're treating some of us truthers like the new CNN or the new MSNBC. And, you know, I think, that's great. Listen to people, but take everything you hear, even from us with a grain of salt, because you have to use your critical thinking skills as well, because we weren't using our critical thinking skills. And that's what we got in the mess we're in now, you know? And so we have to like, we, and as I said earlier, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So even if you're following, no one is immune to that. No one is immune to that. And so we have to be careful as humanity, not to put people, we can respect people for their work, Absolutely. But not to idolize people because then we're getting back into mm -hmm. danger. Like we, that's a red flag. Like we were in before, then we've just got a new Dr. F I'm not going to say his name, but with a different face and a different name, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so we have to start to like uh, go deep inside. And, and if something, there was this great, I was listening to this podcast and they were talking about this um, experiment. I don't remember what the experiment was called. It's done years ago. And they had like six uh, participants in this experiment and five of the participant, participants were in on it and the one was not. And so they would put something on the board, like two apples, and they would ask every single participant, how many apples are there? So the first two rounds, all five participants would say two apples or three bananas. And the last one would agree, yes, there are two apples on the board. But then in the third round, they would put like four apples on the board. And all the five participants who were in on it would say, oh, I see six apples there. Even though there were only like three or four, even though the number was different on the board, but the fifth, the fifth participant would just say what they said because they started doubting because what they were seeing was not what they were saying. And so they just went with what they were saying. And it was mm -hmm. incredible mm -hmm. to listen to them talk about this experiment they were running, that these five people knew they were giving the wrong number, mm -hmm. but this one just didn't start not trusting himself because of what they said. And that should be a lesson to all of us. I hope that makes sense the way I paraphrase that experiment, but uh, I can't remember what the experiment was called. If somebody can remember it, please put it in the comment section. Cause it was an interesting, interesting, that the kind of shows what happens? So even with us truther, if there's a truther people idolize and love, and all these people are praising them, saying that this person's great, they're lionizing them, hero worshiping them, and one person is like, wait a minute, something's not sitting right with me with the information they're giving. Stay with that feeling that you're feeling. If something doesn't feel right, stay with that. It doesn't mean yeah. because everybody else disagrees with you. I heard a theory on that. Right, can I just is... bring David in, Medina? <laughs> oh, <sure. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, just keen to hear what David thinks about all that. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I think, I think, especially in this community, things can travel so fast, and who knows where the, the real source comes from, right? Mm. And it gets shared, and it gets shared, and it gets shared, and and quite often, you might get the same thing from three or four, maybe five or six different people, and then you go, okay, there's enough people for me to to go, yep, that's that's what it is. But really, it's the same information. Uh, mm. I, I think the real, the real truth is that we don't know what the real truth is. Mm. And we may never know what the real truth is until it's like there's an element of having that hard evidence, but there's also an element of just, well, not an element. It's just trusting your intuition, really. Mm -hmm. And even if it seems to be legit, <laughs> like the mainstream media seems to be legit, you know it's all BS anyway. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yes, uh, I heard a theory on, on this that was fascinating, which is that um, people have different, obviously, DNA. And so the, the ones that have more cosmic DNA from other realms who haven't spent as many lifetimes here on Earth or haven't been here as much, often they have, like, it's like they've got a clearer DNA. And so they can... Um, they can ascertain when things are not true because their DNA doesn't align with it. So I, I just thought that was a really interesting theory and, and it does explain it on some level why some people would just go along with the program and just believe everything they're told and other people just inherently won't, won't do that. So, yeah, it could be DNA. <laughs> I think have, also, you guys, have you guys seen... Sorry. sorry have you guys seen that... Exp it's a similar kind of experience to the one you were, you were mentioning, Bryce, where there's maybe 20 people or something or 15 people in a doctor's office and yeah. they, they do that ding noise and then they, everyone stands up when they do it and when they, they sit down and this person comes in and is like, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, and she keeps doing it. She starts doing it and she gets really into it and then she's the last person and by the end of it, because everyone else is in on it except her, and by the end of it, uh, they bring another person who's not in on it and, and they do the ding and she stands up and then and he's like what are you doing and she goes oh they were just doing it before and so they start doing it together <laughs> yeah. and, um, <laughs> we see that a lot don't we we've seen that with all this issue and everything and i think the other thing um going back to what you were just mentioning about using your intuition and everything is the other thing i'm still seeing which really really concerns me actually and and bryce you and i've talked about this loads about are people just swapping youtube and bittube for msm bbc etc there's so many sources of information out there for people which is absolutely brilliant yes there is still a lot of censorship but people are very creative about finding ways around that but equally um and it goes back to sort of the fact that we were all talking about the work is always within us all as individuals, because just because you disagree with someone doesn't mean you need to spend a lot of energy then slagging them off and getting other people to agree with you. Um, and I find that it's uh, for me, it's like a classic displacement behavior because again, it's like what triggers is that what shadow side is that raising in yourself and um, all of everyone's here to perform a different role everyone on the planet you know every being has got their own unique journey their own unique role their own unique lessons to learn and everything and we're all going through things at our own pace in terms of what's right for us as individuals so i think it's it's really important for me that people all everyone as an individual questions am i contributing something on a positive way that's moving us forward or am i taking us back into the negative behavior that we're trying to move away from um and again i i, I can understand it's frustrating and i can understand everyone wants to get their opinion across and i can see that but it's it's like is it constructive is it moving things forward or is it bringing the vibration and the energy and the behavior patterns back down again to something you don't want where they say opinions are like assholes, everyone's got one, you know, like you have to remember a lot of times this is speculation and opinion based on, I mean, I know my friend Stephanie, our friend Stephanie, she talks about this a lot when she does her tarot reading, that even when she's reading the cards, any reader is coming to the channeled information from their own life experiences, whether mm -hmm. they're conscious of it or not, and their own, their own perception of truth. Right. And so that's why even with divination, you always have to take it with a grain of salt. You always have to leave, take what resonate, resonates and leave the rest because even the reader themselves, I mean, I know a lot of people will say that uh, I know in my life that channeling is the least reliable form of divination because it is coming through a filtered perception of a human. And so you have to take it all with a grain of salt, even things like the raw material, you have to always take a little bit with a grain of salt because it is, it doesn't mean that the entity giving you the information was mistaken. It's, it's um, meaning that the, the filter it's coming through was coming through the mind of a human. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. And it might not be that the information is wrong at all. You just have to understand that it's coming through the eyes of the person who's we all have perception. Our reality is our perception. And so, and that is so, so I just, I just really hope moving forward that humanity as a whole takes responsibility, first of all, for themselves. And then second of all, when they, when they're presented with a subject doing their own research and really experimenting with their own 
feeling and gut feeling with how they feel about something and a decision being made. I mean, my dad told me a story once when he was in veterinary school that they gave the whole class medicine and half the class got like the real medicine and the other half got a placebo, a sugar pill, but they didn't know who had what. And it was an experiment to see what people would write down the symptoms that they were feeling. And a lot of the people who got the placebo were experiencing symptoms that would not have been caused by the placebo because mm-hmm. they thought they had the real pill. And so it shows you how the mind yeah. can actually create delusion depending on what the mind wants to believe. Absolutely. That's so, uh, I, it, it's brilliant. I, I love all that work. Yeah. yeah. There have been many, it's many Sorry, yeah, there have been many, many experiments like that of just, and even not experiments. Like I heard a story about a woman who was flying, she was allergic to some sort of flower or something. And when she, when she found out that the plane that she was flying in was about to fly over her old town or her old city where there were loads of this flower, she started developing these symptoms and she was, you know, really high up. Then it turns out they didn't even fly over it anyway. <laughs> and... So, yeah, it's insane that yeah. how, how powerful the mind is. Mm-hmm. I think it's also where you're being emotionally triggered, you know, looking when, whenever you have a reaction to something, it's looking at the, the, the core reason of, you know, why you were triggered um, and, and, and going back to the, the healing aspect of that, of why you're triggered and then healing it and then looking at it that way. You know, it's, it's maintaining a level of, uh, I guess, neutrality, um, you can still be an unconditional love, but you can be, you know, neutral with things. And when you're not neutral and when you have a strong reaction, it's, it's really examining why that is. And, you know, the masters were able to maintain that level of uh, neutrality with everything. Um, and, and, you know, that's really what we're aiming for. It's really interesting because I've been working with the Hawke and Scale of Consciousness. I don't know if you know that. Mm-hmm. And just looking, you know, but it's fascinating because they say that if somebody holds the resonance of 500, which is love they can impact 750,000 souls by just holding that resonance and then you go up to the scale of enlightenment which is um well the, the highest level is a thousand and then you, you you multiply that would be um impacting millions of people by people being able to maintain you know neutrality and those sort of ascended master type um characteristics which more and more people i feel that there are many people out there that are starting to really embody these things and uh, i i i feel i mean I, i've got some incredible Incredible, you know, all, all you wonderful <laughs> friends and all my other friends, you know, that, just people that have amazing abilities and gifts. And so I think we are getting there um, in, in many ways. And I'm seeing people embodying these things, which is really exciting. How much with what's going on at the moment? Because I, I agree with all of that, Medina, and it is really exciting. There's so much good news coming out at the moment, but there's also a lot of. Um, you know, day-to-day realities that people are having to live with. And what's really obvious still is there's still huge discrepancies across the globe um, in terms of what rules and regulations are, where individual people work um, and live and how easy it is to people get out there. But do you think with all this sort of um, awareness and, and the community that we've been in of exploring and finding out all this information, do you think people have lost sight of the need to actually be in and enjoy and have gratitude for the present moment and live their lives. Yeah. Yeah. They're so getting distracted everything <laughs> they just uh, well, mm. constantly wanting to i mean I, I feel that sometimes myself i have to say no medina not on your phone now <laughs> Leave them yeah. and you know just stay away and just not not because that that is a real thing that's happening at the moment that you just want to see the latest information because also we're waiting for the shooter drop we're waiting, we're waiting for this you know thing that shifts everything forward in a positive way and so there's that real um um it's like an addiction for some people that they've just got to be up with all the latest news all the time i see that a lot and on on their phones all the time so that's very much a um a bit of a uh you know a a problem at the minute i think with everything it it goes back to the whole old saying misery loves company and it kind of circles back to um what we were just talking about working on the self and projection and sometimes um people get kind of addicted i think to drama they mm. need something mm. to stress about. Yeah, very much. So. They're not, and struggles. Yeah, they're not comfortable just being with themselves. And I think sometimes what happens as well is we all 
you know, I know for myself, I mean, it's going to take me, and Guruji used to say, you know, one month, two months, 10 years, no use, whole life practice, whole life is your practice. You never finish working on yourself. Mm-hmm. I know for me, if there's something, an issue I'm dealing with, or like a trigger that's come up for me that I know I need to sit with, instead of being uncomfortable and sitting with it, I'll turn to my phone, or I'll turn to another dramatic event that's X outside of myself to put my focus on as a projection to not work on me. And I'm not saying that people don't need to keep up with the news. Of course, we need yeah. to keep up with what's going on. But to be mindful of the fact that sometimes misery loves company. Sometimes in this very friction resistant time period we're living in, we're we're being forced to get uncomfortable. We're doing this subconsciously to not deal with our own crap. We're going to make it somebody else's fault. Escapism. Absolutely. 100%. And so I would really encourage people when they feel the need to pick up their phone or, I mean, a lot of times when we were growing up, we had it the best because we didn't have escapism as much because we didn't have a lot of distractions. We had to use our imagination. We had to play. We had to work out our issues with our friends ourselves, you know? And so um, I would just really encourage people that when you find yourself getting addicted to social media, to following, when you're frustrated because a new YouTube video hasn't come out, sit with that for a minute, go outside in nature and leave your phone in the car, like, and just let yourself be a human. Let any cry if you have to cry, like really let yourself move through your own stuff. Because that stuff is not going to go anywhere. It's stored energy in your body. It's not going to go anywhere until you allow it to go somewhere. So, yeah. Have a, have a whole day off your phone. <laughs> like a fast. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Like we spoke about, I think, last time, about we, we all need that time to integrate. So I've been spending a huge amount of time doing my gardening and planting my vegetable garden and things like that because it's that time of year. And I've noticed that by switching the stuff off and actually having that integration time, it's been really amazing in terms of um, a lot of new awareness has come to me in all sorts of different areas. And it's that integration time where you do the work. I was speaking to this amazing lady last night about this through, through her dog, actually. And it's like, you know, you've done so much work, everyone, over the last few years and each person will have their time when they need to then take themselves off and then integrate everything and then tune in with what they're feeling. And then they come back at a much greater level of it, um, understanding. And it's certainly been working for me on a personal level. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes we even think like I, I was talking to a friend yesterday about uh, repetitive patterns and relationships and we see this a lot with ourselves and with our friends when you see like especially girlfriends you'll see your girlfriend like dating basically the same guy over and over and again the same issues are coming up over and over and again well those issues are really stemming from the the common denominator and so you know that's a good reflection a mirror back to and we can see that with our friendships with our relationships with our our community with ourselves mm-hmm. of what what inside of us is trying to get that attention and um in order for us to have a healthy relationship with anyone be it a romantic partner a friend what our family what our community whatever we have to be balanced within ourselves we have to take that accountability to work on our own mental and emotional health we can't put that off on somebody else Are you guys seeing much on in your local area? So one thing that I'm really interested in is the community aspect, because we talk about community a lot and we've sort of got our online community. But what are you seeing? Are you seeing anything, David, in your local area and things changing on a community level at all? I've seen maybe two people not wear muzzles when they go to the supermarket or something. And that's about it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We we don't have much of a community, to be honest, where I live. It's really kind of, it's, I said this to you last time, Catherine, it's like the bigger the community, the smaller the community, you know, in many ways. And, and where I live, I just don't feel like there's a much sense of a community, unfortunately. Uh, it may, it may unfortunately take touch wood, uh, a, uh, a real disaster, you know, to bring people together. Uh, yeah. Because the because the current ones are only dividing people, you know. 
Yeah, that's so true, isn't it? It's an interesting scenario. What about you, Medina? What are you noticing? I totally think people are really um, starting to focus on how can I build community that that are, or how can I be part of a community that aligns with who I am um, it's a little different I think Dave to where you are I feel a lot of people are talking about it and they're wondering how they can put these communities together you know practically I think we've had some triggers here that you haven't had in Perth which have been you know the floods mm. and that you know one of the insurers um, was saying to a friend of ours that went through the floods it was literally the worst uh, disaster that had ever happened in Australia, you know, that for a long, long, long time, these floods, people don't realise how severe um, the first flood that went through, you know, about six weeks ago was here in this part of Australia. And, and so when that sort of thing happens, it really does galvanise people to think about how they can, you know, work together. Um, we, we, we're starting to think about things like um, food shortages. So how can we, you know, maybe come together and grow our own foods and how can we, how can we have different skills that each of us need so that we can all mutually come together and have all the, all the skills that we need in a community um, within the community and and so I think it is triggering subconsciously and consciously in many many people this this feeling of wanting to be in communities and being with their spiritual tribe definitely I'm feeling that very strongly what about you Bryce well I you know you said something that I was thinking about yesterday with uh, Stephanie and you said this to me as well I think for us um Every, as human beings, everything comes down to our intention in life. And that is something you can't hide by words. Like you, you talked about with dogs. If I tell Ravi, my dog, to sit, he doesn't mm. know to sit. He just knows what I'm asking him to do because of my vibrational intention, right? And so the two sh yoga shalas where I still teach, both of these yoga shalas have never once like complied. They mm. didn't go out and make any statements about it. Neither one put anything on social media. They just kept doing what they were doing. They just kept teaching classes as normal. And um, at this point, these are the only two yoga shalas that are probably going to survive. Hmm. Uh, all of my classes are packed. They're at AYA, there's waiting room only now for some classes. Um, my last course is coming up starting May 1. And before we even advertised it uh, for a while, because I'm going to take a break, um, it had already basically sold out. And what, and we don't, both of these shalas, we don't say anything. We don't talk about you know, the flu, we don't talk about this, we don't talk about anything, we just stand in our integrity. None of my students care that I adjust them, they don't care if I'm breathing on them. But just by holding that truth within yourself and knowing what your boundaries are, it's going to bring in people that are also aligned with you. And it took a while, it did, there were, I know for both shalas, there were scary times when um, are we going to survive? But mm -hmm. the integrity of standing in truth meant more than survival of the business. And now it's, um, turns out people don't like showing paperwork when they go take a yoga class, you know? Mm -hmm. And so regardless of whether they're where we are, as far as understanding or not, it's vibrationally bringing in that community. Um, and so, and we've had, especially at AYA, we've had countless students get emotional and like, thank us for mm -hmm. not making anything weird, for just being normal. Mm -hmm giving them a place of norm normality. Now, with that being said, I am in the state of Georgia and Georgia is very, a very conservative state, even though I'm in Atlanta, Atlanta is a liberal city, but it's still very conservative compared to like London or New York or Philadelphia. Philadelphia just reinstated this for inside. And so, um, and outside of Atlanta, you won't see this at all anywhere. Um, yeah. I'm heading down to Florida tomorrow and Florida is like, just live your life. Florida is like live and let live, right? It's like, you know, so it does depend on, I think, where you are in the world about what I feel sorry for people who are in like London or New York or who are like us, because I, I can imagine that would be. London's very never been bad. London's, London's bad. never been bad. <sighs> then New York. I knew no New, New York. Yeah, I thought it, it was really bad. When people no, were London's, in, were London's in. never been bad. I mean, we've never got to the stage where we've had to have a passport to go in somewhere. Or something it's never got to that stage in england oh, wow. it has in scotland and places but it hasn't been things yeah. so it's interesting about how this is one thing i find is people's perceptions and realities are really really yeah. different and going back to the community i mean i probably live in in sort of the, the smallest place out of all of you i don't quite know with medina but 
And so where I am, I'm the only person around here that thinks like I do about what's going on and things. However, the sense of community is really, really strong. So like one of the elderly neighbours has just died recently and everyone's rallying together and helping. And when we had the storms, everyone rallies together and helps and everything. So what I find really fascinating, particularly with what you were saying, Medina, about you know, we've been told the whole way through this by the 17th letter of the alphabet, everything that you can't tell people, you have to show them. And whether you're listening to Joe Dispenser, whether you're listening to whatever, the, there is a lot about human nature that has to wait for some sort of tragedy, disaster, things to hit rock bottom to take action. But what I find really fascinating is even though no one in my immediate facility, I have got friends sort of a little drive away that are very much talking about the things that we're all talking about, but no one in my immediate little community would agree with anything that I think about, about this or that. But the whole way through, we've never seen each other with these on because we're all in the middle of the countryside. So even the people that completely believe in it and would wear one shopping would never, we've never seen anyone locally with one of these on because we're all walking around doing our horses and walking our dogs and out in our garden and things like that. Now, if I bumped into them in the supermarket, they'd all be wearing this. But I've never seen them locally. But what has really struck me recently, because we've had nothing like you've had, Medina, but we've had the storms and we've had deaths of people and we've had other people have other things that have meant they've really need to come. Everyone's there like that. Everyone's really there like that. So even though in that respect, like what you all say about your vibration, our belief systems about certain issues haven't affected the stepping in to help at all. That's lovely. Mm. Great to yeah it's really lovely to see and it's really made me appreciate a lot because they all think i'm mad because i've had quite a few discussions with some of them about this and about this but then they'll all come to me for herbal solutions and things with their animals <laughs> Ill, or if they've got something and they're feeling ill after this like well have you got anything to help but it's not <laughs> it's really special to see how when you're living in these remote areas and i'm not that remote i mean i'm only an hour on the train from london but we're very much not in a town or a thing you know all spread out it's beautiful to see how people are helped step in and help each other without even needing to be asked when something's needed there was um somebody said this a while ago and i'm going to be careful about how i say this you know people the big the big tragedy of my life before 2020 of my generation was the thing that happened in September. Um, oh. And the, I'll just say the early 2000s, just to be careful. You guys know what we're talking about. And somebody said, you know, I don't want the America that existed before that event. I want the America that existed the day after that event. Because I, I was still, I was about to leave actually to head off to England when that happened. And living in a city and being here and watching people hold each other watching mm -hmm. all of a sudden people weren't democrats or republicans they weren't black and white or latin or asian they weren't men and women here in america it gets me emotional the day after that you saw american flags flying everywhere everywhere and people were literally all of a sudden none of that none of the details mattered because we were all americans and we came together and that it was such a through that tragedy, there was such a beautiful coming together of human beings. And it's sad that it had to take that tragedy for us to remember how to love each other. But, um, but you're right. Sometimes when something like that jolts us, all the details, it's like when you lose somebody that you love to, to death. Oh, that's what I was going to mention too. I, I had a little baby that passed at birth. And I tell you, it opened so many hearts at that moment. You know, people would be um, crying and, and releasing tears that they'd held all their life and, and just opening their hearts. And, and, and to see people in, in such a space of unconditional love through that experience, even though I was a mother, was, was incredibly um, beautiful and touching. It was really poignant, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And I will say, too, that, you know, that there, there is on the 18th of April, you know, there, there is potential for, um, you know, the people have talked about a possible thing happening in, I think, New York, too, with, uh, I can't say the word, but flapping one of those things, you know, so, you know, it's good for people to remember that, too, that, um, 
th those sorts of things can 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 also really um, create um, situations where people uh, learn how to how to really love and open their hearts. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and let's hope that we're evolving enough as um, humanity has made me cry now. I can't really talk. Oh, would you I just want to give you a big hug for that? Um, oh. Yeah, I just want to say, um, you know, I just hope that we're learning enough so that we don't have to go to rock bottom and have something really horrendous happen to bring that oh. together again. And I think that's why talking through things like this, for me, that's why I do it, because awareness just shifts everything. And, you know, I followed, I followed Oli Damagov for years before any of this happened. He's one of the main people about the flappy things that aren't true that has brought to it awareness. And um, I just, there's so many brave people out there that are really putting everything on the line, everything on the line to bring these things to our awareness. And the beauty is, is there's so many people across the globe that once you see these things, you can't ever go back to not seeing it, everything you look at. And that just gives me such, such hope. And I, I just hope um, we can all pull together and focus on um, the love and the similarities and not worry about the difference of opinions. It just doesn't matter. So long as your intention, as you said, Bryce, is in the right place, how you express that, let's not get hung up on those details. I just wrote a um, manifesto of unity, actually, for um, my Patreon community, and I'm going to um, put it up on my site, and it's all different aspects of what unity really means. And um, I channeled it, actually. I got, I got up in the morning and it just came through, and um, I'm really excited to, to share that with people, so I'll have that up soon. <laughs> yeah. Any final words from you, David? No, I think... Uh you all touched on some amazing points there. And I think the, the interesting thing about that video where there's a possible thing that's going to happen in New York, when somebody puts a video out like that, it can quite often negate the, the thing from happening, stop the thing from happening, you know, mm -hmm. because it's bringing people's awareness to it. Mm -hmm. So let's hope that is the case and that they keep bringing out right. videos that, that stop them any future things happening as well. Um, because we can really all pray is... and for it not to happen and send positive energy so that might help. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, Dave, keep going. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope that um, that information that, that gets out there to people will help to negate it, like you say, that that would be... Um, you know exactly um, what we want to create energetically and you know your the power of your mind is so incredibly um, it, it has so much impact thoughts that for example placing the ultraviolet purple flame around the planet can transmute um, planetary karma like you wouldn't believe if you could see the effects of placing an ultraviolet purple flame of transmutation around the planet and see everything lifting off when you did that if you could see that you, you would be doing it every all the time you know every day <laughs> and so just the power of our intention and our thoughts and our heart the power of our love the power of our heart is is just what we need to really activate it this time yeah treat your thoughts like they cost you a dollar every oh, time i love that <laughs> because you wouldn't waste any any money on uh, on stupid negative thoughts and you know we need to be clear about a t-shirt for that price i know i always say don't believe everything you think but i like that one better because that one means that you actually have to give up something if you hang on to something so yeah yeah we should talk to liz about a t-shirt for that because for sure it's so that just these little simple things are so great. Well, I found, um, I know Bryce, you are off on an Easter holiday, so have an amazing time on that. Thank you so much to all of you. I just always learn so much from these, and it just makes me think and that things and feel sort of different things. And yesterday on my dog walk, I found a swing in the woods, so I'm going to go off and play on the swing. <laughs> 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 it was so great yeah i hope the children don't get cross with me i i didn't break it so it but was it wasn't there before no um it was that, and someone must have a very fit dad or something or mum that's on it because it's really high up in a lovely pine tree 
and it wasn't then mm. we've got beautiful so many beautiful walks around here and i was out and i did a slightly different um route yesterday and then i found this swing and it's the funniest thing is watching my dogs watching me on it but it was so <laughs> good it was such good fun you know just the rope with a bit of stink on it and um so i'm going to go and find the swing again and, uh, and push the children off and get on it <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you all, my sister's golden retriever retriever reba loves the trampoline Mm. <laughs> I said, well, she has video she puts video she'll look outside and reba will be jumping on the trampoline so <laughs> <laughs> go have fun with your swings and your trampolines exactly <laughs> go, go I've, 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 got a good one too. I've got a friend who she's a wildlife carer and she had a kangaroo and she taught it how to hold a basketball and it would throw the basketball <laughs> <on> this kangaroo <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the video of that. She used to have a video of it. <laughs> they just love playing with us humans. They love seeing us having joy and everything. They love the cats quite often get on our trampoline. I mean, my children are young adults. So <laughs> I've still kept the trampoline for me. <laughs> and often late at night, I love going out in the dark, healing all the owls and just bouncing up and down on my trampoline. Um, I love owls. Oh, I've got so many owl stories. I love owls. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> everyone well i hope everyone has a lovely easter break if that's something that you celebrate or have family times for or anything and um thank you so much all for joining us and for everyone making it at all the different times well, at least we've got diaries coordinated now take care everyone <laughs> bye. bye guys bye <laughs>